here. Holy crap. I think we're working. Yes, I do indeed think we're working. <laughs> Yay! Okay, it's working now. Not entirely sure what happened, but uh, full reset of everything in the house seemed to have worked. So... Yeah. Okay. Hang on, let me get this fixed. It looks a little unstable, but I think we are working. Hold on. You know, just look at my unusually oversized head because of this Vish lens thing going on here. All right, I think we're good. Okay, uh, now that I lost all my viewers for the day, <laughs> how is everyone doing today? I hope the answer is wonderful. Wonderful and excellent. Seven viewers, seven whole viewers. Well, I guess seven of you get the news today. Hey, Benjamin. How are you? It's good to have you. Give me just a second. Let me make sure everyone pops back in here. Um, looks like everyone thinks I am dead at the moment. Quality over quantity. Indeed, that is actually the perfect definition of our community. We have some quality freaking members here. Makes it feel like more like a family than a than a large community like some of these crazy crypto communities that get rather toxic when they get too large. I'm trying to think of how to head that problem off. Like everyone's pretty excited about Streamtide and the launch of the 2.0 dApps that we're going to be launching and I'm kind of like, what if we get too big? What if it gets toxic? We need bigger ban hammers. Yeah, Uno, we are back on track. Um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and run with the news. Um, if anyone missed it, they can just watch the replay and uh, and we'll just call it good. Um, yep, yeah, let's switch over. So, um, the markets obviously are quite volatile and crazy. Last time we were looking. Uh, we keep bouncing off this lower trend line here, and it's just, it seems to be holding strong. Not bad. Our uh, little reversal point here, this red line in the middle, seems to be holding in a new zone now. And the bulls and the bears are duking it out. But, is this a bull trap? I don't know. A lot of people are saying this is a bull trap. A lot of people are saying this is a super cycle. A lot of people are saying, uh, I don't know. A lot of people are like me and they trade themselves into a stable coin because <laughs> they're too conservative. Um, wherever you are on the spectrum, um, feel free to say in chat, I don't care. <laughs> Bigger bonks. 
You can bonk me. I just told everyone to speculate in chat, I think. Um, no, uh, not so much speculating, just like, where is this headed? This is insane. This is an interesting week, and we're going to talk about something a little controversial. We're going to talk about the London hard fork. We're going to talk about uh, regulatory stuff. We're going to talk about some interesting things today that might make this chart go insane. I'm just here for the ride. You know, Doctor, I am here for the ride as well because, well, it's better than relying on a bunch of sociopaths to run the economy. I'd rather have some grassroots craziness than sociopaths, or as Elizabeth Warren would call them, shadowy coders. Ooh, that sounds kind of cool, honestly. Anyway, let's take a look at what the shadowy coders are doing in DeFi. Well, let me comment on this right now. Um, we are at a very key point of, of liquidity right now. So, I mean, we could be bouncing here. But let's look at the news and everything else that's going on before we count our chickens before they hatch. DeFi Llama shows that we did significantly run back up on value locked in DeFi. And instead of it kind of chopping off to the side and coming down to a point and then breaking out to the lower side it actually broke out to the upper side so uh that's interesting to see people got a little more antsy to dive into DeFi, and we're back up to 120 billion locked in DeFi. so interesting to see but some people are saying this is a bull trap let's take a look at let's take a look at why people are saying what they're saying obviously the bulls are like paypal's jumping in and going super saiyan and crypto they're uh building their super app that is supposed to have all kinds of crypto functions built into it and they're going to be the on-ramp to crypto and that's interesting to see they're giving coin people like coinbase a run for their money here in the states um paypal sucks to be honest um so I doubt they're going to pull it off very well because they haven't won hearts and minds, but neither has Coinbase. So we'll see how it works out. Coinbase has made people just as angry as PayPal has in a lot of ways. Uh, and a lot of people have disowned them this year. A lot of people are like kind of opting out of the whole Coinbase world, which is neither here nor there. I mean, it's whatever. They've done great things for the industry. You can't deny that, but uh, to each their own, they've booted people for nonsense reasons and all of that, So, but so will PayPal. So it's like, this is just how centralized exchanges work. Not your keys, not your coins. That's the way it works. So beyond that, they're all the same to me. Except Coinbase is actually contributing a lot more than PayPal. New Jersey pensions invested seven million in Bitcoin mining stocks last quarter. That's pretty interesting. That's like pensions actually be moving into crypto funds. That's that's fascinating to see. We'll see how that works out for them. Hopefully the market doesn't wreck those pension funds because if the bears are right, I don't know if that was a smart decision. If the bulls are right, well then we're in a super cycle and that was the smartest decision. We will have to see. Ethereum celebrates 6th anniversary as devs race to upgrade it. Yes, the London hard fork is coming tomorrow. Uh, that's the big news for the Ethereum network. Uh, this is going to do a few different things. Mainly, it's going to make gas tokens obsolete. So if you're speculating on gas tokens, not only have they probably already been dumped on you, they are gone obsolete and as of tomorrow will have no real use case because instead of gas moving up and down every five seconds like it does right now as of today every 10 minutes the gas costs for using ethereum will change so everyone will pay the exact same thing every 10 minutes and you have to wait the next 10 minutes to see what you're gonna have to pay so that's gonna smooth gas pricing out significantly among a lot of other changes that are preparing for eth 2.0 so uh, this is a step towards scaling uh, Ethereum, but uh, definitely not going to make it cheaper like a lot of people are hoping, but it's supposedly supposed to make, uh, as some people are calling it, fixing, fixing an economic glitch in Ethereum. Um, 
I do have the, the ultrasound money meme on my Twitter account, but I don't necessarily buy it entirely. I think it's kind of a terrible meme, to be honest, uh, and not much more else than that. I just love memes, so I'm wearing it on my Twitter profile. Uh, that is not to say that Ethereum is just going to become ultrasound amazing forms of money and fixing the economic glitch just because of tomorrow's upgrade, a lot of stuff might actually break. A lot of stuff might not work. Uh, like all big upgrades in new software, you're going to have to go through a beta test phase. Uh, and that's what's happening tomorrow. So make no mistake, some stuff might not work. Some stuff might break. We might find bugs. There might be vulnerabilities in smart contracts that weren't ready for this. That's the way this is. Uh, so it's not an end all be all. But it's fun to say the meme, ultrasound money anyway, and show the little speaker in the bat next to your profile. But anyway, uh, that is what's happening tomorrow. It's a big change. Your wallets will likely not have the gas pricing that you are used to seeing. You won't be able to really change the, uh, the GUI anymore. You are just going to um, see a set standard fee that everyone pays and tipping miners will be an optional thing rather than that going to them and instead uh, Ethereum fees for paying a transaction will be burned and that's why everyone's saying this is ultrasound money because uh, Ethereum becomes deflationary and starts burning Ethereum as people use it. We will see how that works out. People may sell the news, buy the rumors, sell the news. That might happen tomorrow so who knows what's gonna happen. Nobody knows. I don't. Binance winds down derivatives offerings in three European countries, talking about rough news to the downside. Uh, yes, Binance, as all the exchanges have been limiting their offerings to certain customers in certain regions, and three European countries are now going to be losing it, including Germany, Italy, and the Netherlands. So, unfortunately, that is going to happen i believe they have like a 90 day window if you are kind of grandfathered in you have 90 days to close out any positions and shut down anything you have going on and they'll let you kind of close it out they're not just going to like shut it down on you um they do have like a 90 day window which is cool i guess but uh unfortunate news uh on the brighter side of things australian exchange coin jar unveils a crypto mastercard uh, that's pretty cool to see. If you are in Australia, I think you are going to have some more options there. That's kind of cool. I don't know how taxes work there. I know here in the States, uh, crypto debit cards suck because of the tax implications. Uh, it's almost better to just like borrow against your Ethereum and spend it rather than cash it out on a credit card and have tax obligations for every little tiny transaction. That sounds like a nightmare, but I don't know how taxes work in Australia. If anyone here does know, uh, please let me know. And uh, I would love to hear what your take is on that. South Korean regulator to reportedly shut down 11 crypto exchanges. Um, more bad news to the downside, or maybe if they were doing illegal stuff, maybe that's good news to the upside. Who knows? We'll have to see. Um, they were shutting a lot of exchanges down for illegal activity, but as we all know, governments kind of just throw that word around just to uh, shut down things they don't like. Is that what's going on here? I don't know. Let me know what you think. Miami, set to launch its own cryptocurrency and rewards users in Bitcoin. Pretty fascinating. I'm going to watch this pretty closely to have a city launch its own cryptocurrency. I mean, I just got back from Miami. Uh, that would be really interesting if it is done right. But that is yet to be seen. If you're in Miami and you live there, let me know how that works out. Check it out. Tell me what the user experience is like. Share it in the community. Would love to hear. Crypto tax debate on Capitol here, Cap Cap Capitol here, Capitol Hill here in the states signals big changes for DeFi. Um, essentially, DeFi is going to be made illegal because the tax implications are retarded, and whoever wrote this bill probably was dropped on their head as a child. Uh, 
because a they don't understand technology they don't understand crypto they don't understand actually being competitive on the international stage and they don't understand anything about what it means to actually move forward with new technologies and empower your citizens as a country uh they're retarded and because they're retarded you should probably email whoever your local whatever state you're in email your senators and and governors and tell them that uh they shouldn't be so hasty on this decision because it's basically going to make crypto DeFi illegal in the united states and you need to get politically active tell them why it's bad tell them if you have a perspective in crypto why they need to actually have a conversation with people in the industry if you have worked in the regulatory sphere explain why this is a terrible decision it basically requires kyc for every tiny little thing you do in crypto whether that's adding liquidity buying and selling crypto uh buying an nft selling an nft like any any little tiny thing and they want to pay for the trillion dollar infrastructure bill here in the united states by taxing crypto users even though it sounds like a five-year-old wrote this but you know have a conversation with some people who understand uh, it sounds like it's just an attack on crypto because we don't like that let's shut it down uh luckily u.s senators have already stepped up to the plate and have heard their citizens and actually have a brain and weren't dropped on their head as a child and understand that this is unworkable and nonsense so uh, several U.S. lawmakers have spoken up against the cryptocurrency tax provision in the $1 trillion infrastructure bill. Uh, great. Awesome. Glad to see it. Thank you, Ron Wyden. Great to see. Warren Davidson. Wonderful to see. Ted Budd, thank you so much for stepping up and using your brain. Um, clearly, you understand what's really at stake here and the important aspect of remaining competitive on the world stage. But we'll see how it goes. Monero's former maintainer arrested in, in the U.S. for allegations unrelated to cryptocurrency. Um, I've heard a lot of give and take on this, that it was cryptocurrency related. It wasn't cryptocurrency related. It was about stealing a box of cookies. I saw that. Is that, not, is that nonsense? Someone tell me. I think that's a rumor. I don't know. Anyway, it was funny, interesting, scary, creepy, whatever. There's also a bug in Monero right now. So if some of the, I guess he's a former maintainer. I do know if you've sent Monero within 10 minutes of receiving it, you are de-anonymized. And uh, so I don't know. I don't use Monero. These are just things I've heard in the past week. Passing it on. Don't shoot the messenger. Uh, crappy stuff to see. We'll see how that all works out. I believe... Yeah, alleged offenses in South Africa between 2009 and 2011 regarding tax implications, I believe is what this was for. But I've heard a lot of weird rumors about the situation. Know more about it? Share it in the community. Would love to hear. FTX is creating an NFT-focused sports and entertainment marketplace. Uh, interesting to see, uh, regardless of your feelings of FTX and margin trading and... Uh, or having access or not having access to FTX, depending on what region of the world you are in. Uh, they're moving forward with things beyond margin trading, crypto trading, and centralized exchange activity. So we'll see how that works out. KYC NFTs, here we come. I don't know. We'll see. Robo Advisor Wealthfront adds support for Grayscale's Bitcoin and Ether funds. So you can buy fake Bitcoin and fake Ethereum through Wealthfront. On discount most of the time. Right now, I do know Bitcoin is on sale if you buy fake Bitcoin as opposed to real Bitcoin. And I do know there is a significant chunk, a uh, significant deficit on the grayscale Bitcoin that uh, institutional investors are probably going to go speculate on that before they speculate on real Bitcoin. So I don't know. Is this a bull trap because of that? I don't know. A lot of people are talking about it. We'll see how that works out. This might be a short squeeze of all short squeezes, and this is the super cycle! Like some people are saying, I don't know, we'll see. Is this a super cycle? Is this the typical slide into the bear market? We'll find out. Next time on Crypto, these are the days of our lives. 
Coca-Cola officially gets into NFTs for charity. Each NFT was created to celebrate elements that are core to the Coca-Cola brand, reinterpreted for a virtual world in new and exciting ways. Hmm. If it's in VR, I better get access to something really cool, Coca-Cola. I want Coca-Cola for life if I'm going to buy overpriced NFTs. Just saying. I better get a lot of free Coca-Cola. Okay, uh, that's it for some of the news. Uh, I do have a little bit of other news that's kind of the topic for discussion today, but we'll get up to that in just a minute. There is a retroactive airdrop for DYDX. If you are a U.S. citizen, you have to... Uh, bend over and deal with the fact that you're not allowed to have this regardless of how much money might be coming your way they're going to flip you the bird and tell you to piss off because uh well bending the knee to regulators they don't like you because you're american eh, i don't know take your pick say whatever nasty things you want to say uh, about dydx I don't get to get involved, so I'm going to say snarky things on stream. Anyway, uh, retroactive airdrop. If you're not in the U.S., go grab it if you've used DYDX. Go to the link that I'm going to drop in chat and check it out. Uh, if you connect your wallet, you should be able to see if you have crypto coming. And uh, if you do, go redeem it. I think you get like a thousand some odd tokens if you've traded on mainnet or the layer 2 scaling solution that they launched however there's a catch you do need to actually trade on their layer 2 scaling solution to unlock the rewards even if you trade it on mainnet so yes and i don't believe you can use a vpn i think using a vpn if you're in the us and you're thinking "Ooh, i could just use a vpn then <laughs> no i guess they're actually like blacklisting people in the states or other regions that are not allowed to claim this airdrop uh, if you use a VPN. So maybe you have better ways to set up a proxy server and bounce around the world and claim it. If you do, uh, don't tell them I told you to do that. <laughs> and uh, definitely pay your taxes on your airdrops because it looks like a big one. Anyway, that's the news for today. Uh, we do have one other piece of news. Um, let me just look it up really quick. I don't even know. So, for those of you who don't know, there is a fork of Ethereum happening on the scale of Ethereum Classic. Uh, I would say larger, because Ethereum Classic actually forked uh, for contentious reasons due to the DAO hack. When the first DAO launched on Ethereum, day one day one it wasn't day one why did i say that that was dumb anyway early on in crypto history uh yeah when ethereum classic was born that was one of the major hard forks of ethereum other people have forked ethereum like polygons basically a fork of ethereum finance smart chain is basically a fork of ethereum but they started empty like there was nothing on these networks when they forked other than ethereum classic but there wasn't anything on ethereum at the time so there wasn't really much going on um this is going to fork into pulse chain so pulse chain is uh a complete fork of the network state so all the tokens all the contracts all the nfts all the activity all the DeFi protocols, all the tokens locked in DeFi, all the liquidity positions, all of everything that is Ethereum is going to be forked onto Pulse Chain, minus some things they're going out of their way to not put on the network. I believe they said anything that uh, totalitarian nation states may have on the Ethereum network uh, will probably be purposely not included in the fork. Uh, known scams and nonsense will not be included on the network, but according to Richard Hart, 99.9% .9 of everything else will be on the network, meaning Meme Factory memes will be on Pulse Chain, uh, Dank will be on Pulse Chain. Uh, mind you, these are all just forked versions that have no real value. They will be like useless ERC20 tokens, but you will hold the private key 
to everything on Pulse Chain. So if you hold the private key to some meme factory memes and some DMT and some dank or some liquidity positions in Uniswap or SushiSwap, uh, those will all be completely copied over to Pulse Chain one for one and you will have access to them. Not only that, but you for every Ethereum you hold, um, you will also be uh, for any Ethereum, not you don't have to have a whole Ethereum. I believe if you have less than Ethereum, uh, it will airdrop you the new Pulse token as well. With one catch, you do need to move your Pulse tokens within 30 days of them been, being airdropped to you. Um, I'm sure because of how crazy the developers are at SushiSwap, you're probably going to go to SushiSwap and be like, oh, sushi swap, yeah, so boom, let's go to sushi swap and connect our wallet, enter app, blah, blah, blah. Um, let me see here. So sushi swap usually has the option to switch networks right here, and they have a whole list of every network that exists right now that anyone is actually using. I'm sure Pulse Chain is going to get added pretty quick to sushi swap if that's the case, and they actually add it. Here's the interesting thing. There's going to be two versions of Sushi. Are they going to adopt Sushi? Are they going to blacklist it, shut it down, and invalidate everything on, uh, I'm sorry, on, on Pulse Chain? Are they going to accept it and duplicate their token supply? Is USDC going to duplicate their token supply? Is Tether? Tether is pretty good about duplicating their token supply <laughs> really quickly. Most of the liquidity on, in crypto is because of Tether. Uh, will they? invalidated do they have the admin keys to do that on every chain i know for a fact that rebasing coins like based coin and yams and uh some of the other ones like what are some of the other ones anyway rebasing coins um uh, uh a lot of them don't have admin admin keys so they're just going to function over on pulse chain as is and that's just how it is. There's going to be one on Pulse Chain that functions the same way it functions on Mainnet with the same token distribution over there on Pulse Chain as well because they're just it's just network stake forked split into another one. Uh, will they have value? I don't know. That's really up to everyone who's holding private keys to those tokens and whether or not they decide to add liquidity or whether or not their liquidity positions have value because of the token on the other side of that trade. That means like Okay, if Tether decides to go, okay, well, we're going to actually uh, recognize the forked version and double the token supply. That sounds like kind of crazy. They might. Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, USDC? I don't know. That's going to open up legal questions, too, because it's, a, it's an airdrop to everyone. So are they going to invalidate those and people trade into USDC before they invalidate them and then they get stuck on a dead coin if people are holding I don't know there's some interesting questions with things being forked like this anyway let me read back here and make sure I'm not missing any questions no Binance is going down in your country pill we can't use ideal anymore to deposit because the service don't want to work with Binance no more. Yeah, that's a shame. Have you tried the uphold card? I have not tried the uphold card. You can spend whichever coin you want without converting and you get 2% back in that coin. That's interesting. Uphold kind of pissed me off, to be honest, um, because they tried suing Andre Andreas Antonopoulos for using the term the internet of money because they actually like trademarked the term, the internet of money, and then tried suing him for right, putting out the book, the internet of money. And uh, the CEO kind of sounds like a slime bag. I've never met him in person, but if I did, I'd probably razz on him a little bit and give him a hard time and treat him like he was like the loser that he is. Just saying, just saying. Patent trolls piss me off, if you can't tell. Oh, Brady, Brady, you're ruining it for me. Uh, Slay Zombies, I'm not trying to say that it's not a good service. Uphold is actually doing really cool things. So here's, here's the flip side of it. While their CEO 
was a jerk for doing that and why he went out of his way to do that was really weird. It was really, really weird. But uphold as a service, if they could just... Rem I'll, I'll stop. Okay. <laughs> uphold as a service does cool things in conjunction with Brave Browser. You earn your rewards. They dump in Uphold. It's pretty cool. Uh, you know, they have the new debit card, obviously, like you're talking about. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm not trying to ruin it for you. Um, they do... They're building some cool stuff, but... Um, uh, crypto gets personal, you know? Like, when someone attacks someone you respect or know personally in really weird patent trolley ways or is just an illegitimate jerk for no reason, it kind of makes you just be like, wow, you're a sleazeball and you just want to not do business with those people anymore. It's a small world in crypto and we're all fighting the same fight. Some of us might be LARPing a little bit. If you're LARPing and you're not in it to win it, uh, that's a different story. But point being, uh, a lot of people are still building cool stuff. You know, Uphold has some cool stuff that they're building with Brave, and, and I love it. I think it's awesome. I wish they'd branch out and maybe use someone other than Uphold so we'd have options. I think that's what crypto is all about, is building competition financially speaking. And I, I want to see more of that. Uh, which is why I'm like always like, you know, I worked at Coinbase. I, I love what Coinbase has done, but I also hate a lot of things that Coinbase has done. And it was even the best and worst working experience of my life. So like, I'm like this with everything, you know? It's a love-hate relationship with a lot of things in crypto and a lot of people in crypto. I'm sure people love and hate me too, so whatever. <laughs> it's just, that's life. That's life. I'm not even sure the 25 bat in the wallet is worth it. <laughs> Uphold requires KYC. Pretty lame. Everyone's going to require KYC. I just actually looked at the talk in um, on uh, ETHCC from Uniswap, and they said they're experimenting with KYC, delisted derivative tokens of stocks, like the tokenized Tesla and... Uh, I think Coinbase and a few others, uh, those are not allowed to be traded on Uniswap's front-end UI. But you can go interact directly with the smart contract and do it anyway. And anyone can spin up their own UI. Oh, speaking of which, that is a piece of news that I missed. Uh, I believe SushiSwap is launching... Is it SushiSwap? Correct me if I'm wrong on this. Uh, this is directly from memory from a last-minute little read before bed last night. They're launching their own... Uh, browser extension that lets you run your own front end to access DeFi apps directly with your own locally hosted front end and and it's going to be from SushiSwap. That is the key. When you have locally ran front end UIs that you're just locally running uh, then it doesn't matter what website you're on. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't, nothing, none of that matters. You can just Use any app, any any DAP, any smart contract, and it will just spin up a front-end UI for you, and you could just run with it and use it. Pretty fascinating concept. Uh, Vitalik actually said that this is the key to solving the social media issue that we have with censorship and all the nonsense happening where social media basically is dominating the world with their front-end UI and their website domain. It's like, okay, we'll just launch our own with this cool little browser extension that lets you locally host your UI done now it's fully decentralized deal with it sushi trident was that it no i don't think trident it was something else hold on sushi swap uh locally hosted ui or daps that's not going to come up is it Fork Uniswap, create your own Uniswap, no. Sushi Swap, no. Where is it? Where did I see this? Why is it not in my newsfeed? Hold on. Sushi Swap browser extension. Um, news. I just saw it. Where is this? This seems like it should be big news, right? Hmm. Hang on. Let me see where, where I stashed this. 
think it's in my Twitter feed here. I think I bookmarked it. Sushi Pro Freedom Extension currently in development. Everyone will be able to host the UI by adding the extension. In the case of the regulation, in the case of the regulation must be applied to centralized website, it's probably the best alternative to trade what you want. Sushi Pro. Okay. That's it. So keep an eye out for Sushi Pro. Did you buy any crypto domains? I don't have any myself, no. Um, I haven't really bothered, other than my ENS names, of course, but not actually like dot crypto domains. Uh, people in the community have them, though. I never really got any. Uh, anyway, Sushi Pro sounds pretty cool. Um, but the topic of discussion was Pulse, right? So ENS names, yes, can't wait till name bizarre come back comes back um it's ready to launch right now we had a couple bugs this week um but it's like finished it's uh it's got a couple issues that we had to like sort out uh we had like a memory leak issue i think i told everyone about um uh, i guess that's all been sorted out uh the guys at vacuum labs helped us out a little bit and uh helped solve some of the problems we had and yeah i think it's ready to go i uh I was just reading last night in the dev chat, and I think everything's squared away. You only have two for resale purposes, Colonel? Cool. Um, anyway, um, to let you, let you all know, though, if you're holding Ethereum um, and Pulse Chain goes live uh, this month or next month, there's not like a specific deadline of when the snapshot of the blockchain is being taken. Uh, but all your tokens will be forked into a new version on Pulse Chain, and all your ETH will be credited with Pulse tokens for every ETH you hold. Uh, just remember, you have to log in to the Pulse Chain side of the network and add it to MetaMask, and you will see your Pulse. You have to move it within 30 days to a new wallet address, and you will be able to keep them. And you should be good. Uh, considering uh, Hex was launched by uh, Richard Hart, I'm sure Hex is probably going to be uh, valid on both chains. Uh, I wouldn't see why it wouldn't be. Um, so we'll see how that works out. That's There's going to be Bridges, a Uniswap clone, and all the exchanges like SushiSwap and Uniswap will have their private keys to their smart contracts. So they might even launch as well. We'll have to see who adopts it and who doesn't. But whoever does adopt it, pay attention to whatever coins you have on that side if they validate them and use them because you will have them over there. So, pretty interesting. It's going to cause some legal issues, though, because, because you have to move your pulse within 30 days. If you have token, if you have ETH on, like, Binance or Coinbase or some centralized exchange... Um, like all hard forks, uh, everyone wants their tokens, even though they're holding them on a centralized exchange. Um, not your keys, not your coins, but everyone always tries to sue these centralized exchanges, getting their airdrops and blah, 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 blah. And to get the airdrop, Coinbase will have to log in to their Ethereum wallets holding everyone's ETH to move their pulse to another address within 30 days of this happening to be able to airdrop them to everyone, I don't think they're going to do it. I think I think uh, that would that would compromise a lot of security with the way a lot of centralized exchanges run. A lot of them have hardcore security practices these days to prevent hacks. So I don't think they're going to be able to do it. So A, not your keys, not your coins. B, you're not going to get the airdrop. But this is also going to cause a lot of legal problems because uh, USDC and tether and Dai and all these other stable coins are all going to be forked on the new network uh, depending on their legal obligations they may or may not have to validate them and respect those forks um i don't see why they would but legal stuff gets hairy with forked chains and this is the first time we've seen the entire ethereum network 
as advanced as it is now being forked one for one onto a new chain with bridges for some tokens which will be live day one it will be for hex and pulse will probably have a uh, bridge and anything else that is just an algorithmic stable coin with no admin keys will just function and if it happens to have liquidity pairs with another coin that has value then it will have value maybe not the same value it has on eth super confusing super crazy i have no clue how this is going to work out um a lot of people a lot of stuff is it's going to break a lot of stuff it's going to expose a lot of vulnerabilities in some bridges and uh, DeFi protocols that might have not prepared for this. It's going to be interesting to watch. Uh, all NFTs are going to have duplicates on Pulse Chain. So NFTs are kind of like just duplicated. So everyone's going to have to choose whether or not they want to like invalidate those, but they can't if it's a fully decentralized project. We can't on Meme Factory. Like, Meme Factory is just going to have like duplicates on Pulse Chain and Mainnet, and there's nothing that can change that because Meme Factory is uh, as decentralized as we could possibly get it. So, Meme Factory memes will just exist over there, and that's just how it is. Um, we, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Meme Factory could actually be scalable and usable on Pulse Chain, while it's currently extremely expensive on Mainnet. So, I don't know. That's another interesting thing. Uh, FYI, we have not talked about this at all. Pulse Chain has not been a conversation we've actually had as a team. Uh, I'm just talking about it because I've been looking at it for the past couple days, and I actually sacrificed a little ETH in the Pulse Chain uh, sacrifice event just for the hell of it to see what happens. And uh, yeah, so we'll see how it works out. Buy one, get one free. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Um, I don't know. Uh, there's going to be a lot of coins that are just useless nonsense that just don't have value. But we've never seen what happens with a true fork of Ethereum. Like, the bridging is going to be really interesting. Because if, you're, if you have liquidity between, like, X and another token, like, the Hex will have value... Therefore, your liquidity position will probably have value. So does that mean you can just trade it and then bridge it over to Ethereum really fast? Or does that mean people are just going to stay on Pulse Chain and not move it and just... I don't know. There's like so many unknowns with this event uh, that it's going to be very strange to watch. Especially if you have liquidity between Hex and... And another token don't go trying to buy tokens and play this speculatively though because uh here's the deal like um they didn't say whether when they're taking the snapshot of the network to prevent people from doing things like that and gaming the network they may have already taken the snapshot they could have taken the snapshot like a month ago if they wanted to and just said oh that's that's the snapshot and like that's the way they're gonna do it they could do it a month from now. They could do it today. They could do it tomorrow. And they aren't going to say when or how they're going to go about doing it. So don't feel like this is something you can play in the market. You're either just, you already have your snapshot is kind of how you have to look at it. And uh, we'll see how it works out. But it is going to be interesting to see how this all works out nonetheless. Stream token on Pulse Chain. Uh, stream token has not been launched yet, so the stream token will only exist on Ethereum, um, unless they get with the program and launch our token on Tri Roll this month um, before any snapshot takes place. Like I said, the snapshot might may have already taken place today though, or yesterday or something. I don't know. Uh, but setting up a bridge is pretty straightforward because uh if someone has an erc20 bridge there's already one available for xdai so you can actually go to xdai and bridge dnt and dank right now trustlessly and i i take that back it's not trustlessly because i believe the bridges are like a trusted third-party service and i do believe they have ad admin keys 
uh, but you can freely do it anytime you want and bridge them to XDAI, and then they become an XDAI version of that other token. Um, which you do have to understand that you're like trusting a new smart contract and not the one smart contract that we created. It's the one that the company who created the bridge created. So it's kind of weird in terms of trust. Um, XDAI, Matic, all layer two solutions are highly centralized and that's just the way it is. So the interesting thing about Pulse Chain for me, and the only reason I have been interested in it, is the fact that it doesn't have a trusted third party and it will operate like a layer two solution without any admin keys and nonsense. Uh, and it's going to fork everything. So if something is truly decentralized, like NFTs, NFTs that are broken on Pulse Chain and don't show up, uh, is a telltale sign that the NFT that you're holding is centralized garbage that doesn't work uh, without a centralized server. However, that said, I believe Meme Factory memes should work, uh, but there is a catch here. I think there is only one actual completely decentralized NFT out there, and I believe it's Avastars. I believe Avastars is the only project out there that will probably just show up on Pulse Chain, no questions asked, no nonsense. Um, I don't think any other ones will. I will say this, um, because of all the forking and new tokens and uh, retroactive airdrops, which is basically what this is, and an, this is a vampire attack from Pulse Chain to a, from Ethereum. That's like, that's what this is. This is a vampire attack. It's gonna drain liquidity. It's gonna drain users. It's gonna drain people who've been priced out of using Ethereum and they're gonna go use Pulse Chain because it's cheaper over there and their stuff is already there. So why not? That's absolutely going to happen. Um, Will it be the same value and price as it is on Ethereum? Who knows? Who knows? That's that's crazy. I, my brain can't even process like valuation of a fork. Like it's like I try to, and everyone's like, "What do you think is going to happen, Brady? Do you think this is going to be worth that, and that's going to be worth this?" And I'm like, I think my brain just popped. Like, like <laughs> I I don't know what's going to happen. It's all craziness. Uh, things that sold for millions will be uncovered as not decentralized, yes. Uh, there will be another $52 million Beeple that is not worth $52 million just floating around on Pulse Chain. And the owner of the Beeple one on Mainnet will own the one on Pulse Chain as well because the private keys are, you know, the same private keys and same ownership. It's identical to Ethereum, but there's going to be two Beeples now. Um... Whether or not those are fully decentralized, I don't know. Like you said, we're going to find out. And uh, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting. Hate it or love it, I've got to say, this is going. This has made it, crypto a little more interesting this week because it was slowing down. I know everyone's talking about NFTs and everyone's like, yay, NFTs. But honestly, I'm kind of bored with NFTs and the uh, algorithmically created avatar pictures and... I don't know. It's just, it's boring. I want to see people using these because here's the thing. It doesn't matter. Your NFT project, if you're an artist like Uno here in chat, uh, Uno minted some NFTs that are redeemable for a physical painting. Uno could decide to just like honor those ones on Pulse Chain and just be like, you know what? I actually have two extra paintings and I didn't have to pay to mint those two extra tokens on Pulse Chain. So you know what? I'll honor those two. And that's the cool thing about using NFTs as patronage is it kind of just gives you free tokens to use like you've already been using them for building a community and using them as patronage and tokens that access something. Uh, stuff like a $52 million Beeple on the other hand, or something that has been billed as being this decentralized NFT, but they have an Amazon web service hosting the images like crypto kitties, like, you know, <laughs> like that's, that's, a, I'm pretty sure crypto kitties is going to be completely broken on pulse chain, uh, as well as a lot of other things. We'll see though. 
Yeah, Uno, you're here. So yeah, Uno, you're you're going to have I the tokens I have on Pulse Chain because I own two of your uh, physical paintings that I can redeem for for these <laughs> paintings. Uh, I own two of them on Pulse Chain and two of them on Mainnet. Uh, you can decide if you want to honor those or not honor those, and that's up to you as an individual to communicate that to your community. Uh, but it is interesting that this boils down all the way to someone like you who just minted NFTs. You're not running a big multi-million, billion dollar exchange or anything, but it still affects you. And you still have to have make the same decisions that those multi-billion dollar exchanges make. It's just a little easier for you to make because you're building a community. They're managing funds. Sounds like a lot of pressure. Dapps that aren't fully decentralized, like District 0x districts, uh, are also going to struggle a lot. If there's admin keys or they're holding funds locked in there, DeFi protocols with staked funds, um, that's going to be weird. If they aren't, if they have a way to create a bridge trustlessly between the two tokens, people might start flooding fake tokens onto mainnet with a bridge they created themselves. Um, I'm not a developer, but I do know vulnerabilities like that could happen um, if someone was lazy or a noob about creating their stuff and they created it in a way that anyone could create a bridge. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to see what happens and uh, I don't know. Could you show us what really decentralized project you were talking about? I couldn't catch the name. Yeah. Yeah, I can. Uh, Avastars uh, should be fully on chain. Um, let me go to the actual website. Hold on. Uh, Avastars Teleporter. That's it. Avastars.io. So this is the project um this is one of very few projects that are completely decentralized um i do believe these should exist on pulse as is without having to worry about it it should just be there um and i think this is one of very few projects that the metadata is fully on chain so i'm pretty sure these will just work which is interesting because now their token supply was doubled. So what does that mean for rarity for a token that isn't used for something? Like Avastars don't have a, f a use case really. Um, they were just an av they were the first avatar project that was fully on chain and decentralized, which is really cool. Uh, but now they've all been duplicated, fully decentralized and on chain. Uh, what does that mean for the value? They, they aren't super expensive. Like, Avastars are kind of cheap right now. They're like... Yeah. They're like 0 0.05 ETH on average. 140 bucks each. I, I say that's not very much, but holy crap. A freaking JPEG image on the internet is worth $140. There's some worth millions, so... <laughs> this isn't worth that much. <laughs> no, not much. I just found $140 in the Pulse couch cushions. <laughs> Put on my top hat. <laughs> Interesting to think about, though. These are all duplicated. <laughs> These are all algorithmically generated, but, like, um, they were generated by the people who would, like, scroll through the page, and it would auto-generate them as you're scrolling, and you would just scroll till you found one you liked, and then you would mint one that you liked that you created yourself just by scrolling. Uh, it was a very, it was pretty uh, interesting the way they did it. It wasn't like a lot of these projects where they made them for you and minted them and you didn't get to see them. It was like the community got to mint them. And I minted, uh, I don't know, probably a good 20 of them uh, just cause I liked the whole concept, metadata on chain. It was like, I'll support that. That's pretty cool. And uh, this will be an interesting test though. If these are on pulse chain, with no issues or problems, uh, I'm really excited to see because this is going to be a test of decentralization uh, for everyone. And I 
don't think there's many projects like Avastars that that are completely decentralized like this. I think they're the only one, honestly, in terms of NFTs. Uh, they were limited in terms of they had like a cutoff date of when you could stop minting them. Um, and in between that window, they could mint as many as they wanted uh, up until that cutoff date. So, um, and then they did another series and they did it again with new facial features and hair colors and eye colors and blah, 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 blah. Uh, so it was, it was pretty interesting. It was like community led, like instead of a project minting them themselves. So it was kind of cool, uh, very different. I'm surprised they didn't get much traction considering how crazy the NFT stuff is and how innovative this was and how much work and effort they put into making it fully decentralized. I felt like they got kind of a bad rap because like no one cared. Like it was like we have $20,000 apes right now and someone who put this much time and effort into making a project with this much care uh, got no traction. Well, they got some traction. I mean, this one's selling for 400 but you know what I mean. Like, come on, there's stuff selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars with low effort, low to no effort. Um, I don't know. I feel like these guys should have gotten more credit for their work. Uno, you said as long as you guys don't ask for all of them at the same time, I think I'll be able to manage. Um, you know, that's the other thing, Uno. You could you could say, like, I will honor those um, on either network. You could say, well, if you want to send the Pulse one to me because it's cheaper for you, um, go ahead. By all means, don't pay $30 in gas fees just to, to burn a freaking token to redeem the physical painting. Uh, do it on Pulse. And I will just uh, I will just invalidate the mainnet ones. You could actually, as an individual, say, you know what? I am not going to honor the ones on mainnet anymore. I'm only going to sell new ones on Pulse. And I'm only going to honor the ones that are currently on Pulse. Because it will save you money and me money minting new ones. That's an option. Um, because a lot of people are priced out of Ethereum right now. And it sucks. Like, a lot of people just can't use it. A lot of people want to use it too, and they can't, but now they can. They're, they can use Pulse. And I want to see ETH win. <laughs> I do. Hey, yeah, uh, Four, how are, you, how are you doing? Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Um, I'd like to have a, a chat with Richard, though. I think uh, Richard and I would have a pretty good chat, but... He only likes to stream with people with a lot of followers. All right, Richard, have it your way. Well, in a bet, an OG like me and an OG like you were probably sitting around in the same chat rooms talking. Why don't you just reach out, brother? Let's have a chat. I'm one of the guys who wouldn't be a jerk to you. I want to see Ethereum win. <laughs> and you're a super crypto bear, and you want to see all of crypto get decimated in the coming bear market. I get it. But I'd like to have a chat with you. He hates NFTs. Uh, no, he does not hate NFTs. He hates the way NFTs are nonsense. He hates NFTs the way I hate NFTs. That's why I would see eye to eye on NFTs because like I've been telling all of you, like give them a use case. Don't mint a useless shit coin. Like Use it as patronage. Use it to unlock things. Use it to redeem things. Use it to reward your community. Use it as a thank you. Use it in some kind of way that gives it inherent value. Instead of just minting shit coins with no use case within like promises of some nonsense in the future. Like it's it's no Yeah, you get I'm I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. And I'm ranting again about the same stuff you hear me rant about every week. So I'll stop. Brady loves eating up 10k avatar sets. Only on Pulse Chain. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's cheaper to buy them. <laughs> King Tola. Algo does NFTs. People are at where the money is at right now. But if people start thinking of NFTs 
and not the crypto they're a part of, will coins like Algo take over? Yeah, absolutely, King, because like if you are using NFTs for something other than speculative nonsense, like, yeah, like you can mint it and give it inherent value. Like a perfect example is I, I, uh, I have these t-shirts for Meme Factory and we're gonna back each t-shirt one for one with an actual token. That means the money that I spent printing out physical t-shirts and minting a token is inherently locked in the token. This physical artwork on the wall behind me, like, hold on, let me uh, jump over here. So the physical artwork on the wall here has crypto embedded in the artwork itself in a paper wallet. You have to physically destroy that artwork to get it off of there. That artwork is inherently valuable, not only because of the art the artist created, the limited amount of physical prints, the nice frame that I put it in, and the crypto that is actually in the paper wallet itself. You have created an inherently valuable physical object permanently. And the connection between the physical world and NFTs is what makes NFTs valuable. That's why I really like what Materium is doing where they're, they're actually taking physical objects and linking them to NFTs. And you're just creating a secondary market that is easily tradable. You can create liquidity. You can roll it into DeFi if you want. You can loan them out on leverage if you wanted. Like, it's it's really interesting to think about what you can do as an artist if you're using NFTs the right way. And if it's just speculative nonsense and you're paying $10,000 for a picture of a monkey um, and it has no real use case other than a club. And, and I'm not saying this about Board Ape Yacht Club. There's a lot of monkey picks. Board Ape Yacht Club, I actually like because they are truly trying to create a club of people and the token does unlock and access some things. It's a little limited. I wish they would do more, but it's a step in the right direction for sure. Like you're using them to join a community and a club and it's a form of patronage uh, if you support that vision of that community. So, Uno, you said, but is it going to work the same way than, than the tokens? Like, if you don't move the NF NFT, it'll disappear? No, that's only Pulse, Uno. Only Pulse does that. It's just baked into the smart contract uh, that it will claw back those tokens if you don't move them. Everything else is permanent. Like, because those smart contracts are hard-coded and permanent themselves. Like, the only reason that Pulse does that is because the, the smart contract was coded that way. So you don't have to worry about other stuff disappearing at all. Will you be checking out the waifu NFT collection in half an hour on Sushi Miso? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, for um, likely no. Not until the Pulse Chain Fork Reckoning has expired and uh, I see exactly what how people are going to validate and invalidate duplicated sets of nfts i want to know how that is going to transpire and work out before i look at another nft unless it's someone like uno because uno has physically redeemable nfts for actual physical paintings that are like the size of my freaking torso well larger <laughs> you know like that is inherent value like i'm talking about um i would buy another uno nft right now in a heartbeat uh, I would not buy one from one of these random 10,000 uh, avatar projects. Like, I just wouldn't. Not until I saw how they are going to validate or invalidate a forked chain. But I'm ranting again. You get the point. Um... Algorand is actually pretty cool, though. I I, I'm, I didn't know there was NFTs on Algorand. Um, I'll actually go check that out, because that's not forking anytime soon. <laughs> um, NFT games will be awesome. It's what digital games have been missing that tabletop games have. Yeah, King Snorky, I think... Um, 
I really have been trying to encourage someone to run D&D games using NFTs and ERC-20 tokens as their money in the game. But it's really expensive on mainnet. And uh, things like Algorand and Pulse Chain and Matic and XDAI allow you to run a game like that with actual value. And if you ish, if you did if you're dungeon if you're dungeon master for a D and D game, and people are playing with you, and you drop a rare sword in a boss fight to someone, give them the actual NFT and keep running that game and build an actual economy with tabletop role playing games played over Twitch. That's a multi million dollar industry right there waiting to happen, and all it will take is a network cheaper than ETH to use. So and it's there. We got Pulse, we got Matic, we got XDAI, we've got all these other networks that are just, they got all the tools you need to do these things. Um, I can't wait. And honestly, Pulse is going to have a lot of the tools that we need day one because a lot of these smart contracts to mint NFTs are out there. Uh, a lot of the NFTs that have minted on mainnet will already be available. ERC20 tokens, like everything. Boombox heads. Hello, sir. How are you? It's good to see you. How are you, sir? Anyway, yeah. Um, will Axie Infinity work on Pulse Chain? Yes and no. Because Axie has already migrated to Ronin. So some Axie stuff is on mainnet and that's going to be forked over to Pulse Chain. Um, I don't think because Axie has already decided to go to Ronin and and did their own thing i don't think they're going to honor anything on pulse chain they're probably going to just pretend like it doesn't exist um i don't know how they're going to approach that though because there's there's axie stuff on mainnet and ronin right now and uh now there's going to be forked versions of all the mainnet stuff floating around on pulse chain uh it's going to screw up a lot of people's brains they're going to have to like really talk to their community and figure out what they're going to do and like us as 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 a nft project at meme factory we have to kind of think about that it's like okay well if there's a bunch of forked stuff on on over there people are going to be like oh can you can you run a pulse chain version of meme factory since it's already there and available and all the memes and dank is there and uh, i want to use meme factory over there and blah blah like you're gonna have to have these conversations with your communities and stuff and and it's gonna be a hard conversation for some projects that weren't fully decentralized. It's gonna be hard with projects with admin keys. It's gonna be hard for a lot of people who didn't take the fully decentralized route. And honestly, uh, I actually talked to the team about centralizing Meme Factory just so it was playable on mainnet. And I'm so glad we didn't because we would have to have that conversation with all of you if we centralized Meme Factory. And that would have sucked because this is going to make so much work for so many developers who decided to cut corners on decentralization. Maybe a good hard lesson learned for a lot of people too. Me too. Uh, I was actually trying, I almost talked the team into doing like a centralized version of Meme Factory. Uh, and it would have sucked. What are some interesting algo projects? I haven't actually kept up on Algorand. Um... Um, DAP radar, I think, would have Algorand DAPs, though, won't they? So, where's Algo? Am I missing Algorand? Hmm. Yeah, I don't think there is any yet. Um, yeah, I don't think there is anything on Al Algorand yet. And that's the other thing. Uh, a lot of these forks of Ethereum, they start empty. And the fact that Pulse Chain is starting as a complete copy of Ethereum, it's not empty. Like, a lot of people who have been priced out of Ethereum might just be like, hey, that old project I was working on that I just ran out of ETH to be able to maintain, use, run, or do anything with, uh, I just got airdropped enough Pulse to go actually, like, develop it on Pulse Chain. There's going to be a lot of people that go do that that just didn't have 
the money that it takes to run on Ethereum mainnet. A lot of people don't realize, but run, deploying contracts on Ethereum, you've got to have hundreds of thousands of dollars to deploy them, maintain them. Uh, if you have a problem and you have to re release uh, funds from a project, you have to pay for all that gas to release funds back to your users. Uh, when we shut down Name Bazaar, we have not started it back up because <laughs> I'm not sure how many of you know this, but we paid like God, I think it was almost forty, fifty thousand dollars worth of gas to release all of your names back to you out of the smart contracts that were locked in Name Bazaar's contracts when you had them up for sale uh, in in Name Bazaar. Uh, we had to pay like forty, fifty thousand dollars in ETH just to release them back to all of you. And a lot of people are still mad because we took a little while and and it's still down. And um, but it's a it's really expensive. <laughs> To run these dApps it's not cheap and there's a lot of people who have been priced out of it completely who just didn't have the money to keep developing and they can actually move forward now where they left off on pulse chain and a lot will uh boombox heads i don't know when you came in but all your boombox head uh nfts they're all going to be forked over onto um Pulse chain now. You're going to have duplicates on Pulse chain instantly. And for every ETH you hold, you're going to have Pulse tokens drop to you. So you'll be able to pay for gas over there as well if you had ETH on mainnet. So when that happens, you're going, as an individual artist, you're going to have to decide like if those NFTs were used for something, you're going to have to say, well, am I going to honor those on Pulse chain? Am I going to use them? If they were redeemable for physical items, I know we talked about redeeming the your boombox heads for like physical like vinyl toys and stuff if you ended up doing that you'd have to actually make a decision on like how you're going to honor those so it's like it's like a brain melting moment for a, a lot of people anyway for those of you who don't know boombox head does some pretty cool nft work if you're looking for help and vr and stuff too he's like He's the VR champion over here and working with some of the coolest people in VR and uh, mints music NFTs and the boombox heads I'm talking about. They look like little vinyl toys spinning around in a in a box like it's an actual toy. Um, and we had we had actually had a discussion about doing cool physical redeemables and I don't know if he ran with that and if he did, I'm sorry for telling you to do that because now you have to deal with Pulse Chain. <laughs> No, Boombox Heads uh, is, uh, did some music for me as well. So for those of you who know that we're launching like a kind of a uh, publishing company for music in conjunction with Streamtide when we launch, um, Boombox Head has been doing a little bit of help uh, for me on that front because he's a really good musician. Um, so yeah, I can't wait to see how all this works out. But uh <laughs> interesting month in crypto it's going to be an interesting month algogyms.io is that a uh, a game let me look at that oh they're just like nfts okay it's kind of cool. What do we have here? I like the cat. It's just super cute. It's probably a stolen image, but super cute though. <laughs> um, some lady licking money. It does not sound safe in the time of COVID, ma'am. It does not sound safe. It's pretty cool. Right on. So Algorand is getting some daps. Right on. Cool. And then the other one was uh, Extra Fox NFT. Huh. Designing Digital Divinity. Oh, well, that's cool. AI generated images and stuff. Huh. I like this fox with the laser eyes. <laughs> I 
I heard Algo was working on it, uh, then saw a tweet from some girl selling her not safe for work NFTs for Algo. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's no, that's the thing. A lot of people are already migrating to other networks. Like, it's just, they've been priced out of ETH. It's just insane. And if you're, if you end up only selling one or none on mainnet, then, like, you just wasted all that ETH. It's kind of sad to see a lot of people end up doing that. You lost us there for a minute? Did we lose you or did you lose me? I'm so alone. Do you think NFTs are a good way to introduce regular folks to crypto? Funko Pop did a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle NFT launch today where folks could pull one of one NFTs that could be redeemed for a physical. Yeah, I love that idea. I think that's great. I think it's awesome. It's probably weird they used Ethereum, but it's whatever. Whatever they whatever they can afford, Funko Pop can probably afford Ethereum. Connection went down on your end? Uh, it may have. I do see some dropped frames. My internet is running like garbage today. Oh, they did Wax? Wax actually has a lot of traction with NFTs. Quite a bit. Funko did the same idea or what we're going to do. <laughs> All good. Yeah, Boombox said it's like, it's kind of a no-brainer though. Like if you're doing physical redeemables, like vinyl toys is like where it's at. Especially if you do some of the stuff like, um, like the team at um, Blankos. Uh, those guys are building like, they look like vinyl figurines in the game, right? And those guys worked on vinyl figurines with NFT uh, tags in their base stations for uh, things like the uh, the games where you would get the, the vinyl figures and place them on the platform and they would show up in the PlayStation games. Uh, what was that? Skylanders. Skylanders. These guys who are working on, on uh, Blankos worked on Skylanders. So they understand that whole dynamic better than most people. So it's, it's really a no-brainer. It's just from getting point A to point B and actually manufacturing this stuff is what's going to be hard. But I honestly don't even like that idea. I really think it's like guys like you with like weird little esoteric little models and figurines and stuff it sounds more exciting because we're talking about culture and not PlayStation and Sony. And I mean, we're that's what crypto is all about is getting away from that, like that whole corporate, like, beast of a world and getting to back to people and that's why i always tell people like my interest in nfts is patronage because it's grassroots people like like you're gonna see some weird stuff from grassroots culture you're gonna see some corporate nonsense crammed down your throat from sony and playstation um maybe not necessarily blankos but they are definitely taking a very centralized route to things so it's like they might get stuck in that world. Anyway. Yeah. And Boombox heads, you said, uh, so Pulse Chain is a fork of Ethereum. You're confused. Yeah, it's, it's a complete fork. It's like, it's like Ethereum Classic. Like it's a perfect copy. Um, of the network state uh, copied from whenever the snapshot is taken. So they're going to, on a certain Ethereum block, they're going to just copy over Ethereum to an entirely new blockchain. And everything that is on mainnet will be available over on Pulse Chain and identical. Copies of every token, every smart contract, every NFT, every staked token, every DeFi protocol, all the private keys that own tokens will own the same tokens on Pulse Chain and vice versa. It will be completely identical. In fact, if you just erased Pulse Token and wrote ETH in there, you wouldn't know the difference. It would be identical. Other than the fact that the front end UIs like Uniswap and SushiSwap and blah, 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 blah all need to log in with their private keys to their smart contracts and access any tokens they have over there on Pulse or if they're going to run a front end like SushiSwap 
supports multiple networks, they'll have to add the Pulse Chain network to SushiSwap. So when you go to their website, you would just select Pulse Chain and log in, and then all your stuff will be over there as well. Um, but there's tokens that were, are going to be invalidated. People with admin keys are going to like uh, actually block and shut it down. Like USDC, uh, they have the ability to like shut the network off with their admin keys. Uh, if you have fake USDC on Pulse Chain, uh, Coinbase and Circle are probably going to make the executive decision to go over there and like log in and shut it down and, and, and invalidate and shut down the smart contract on the Pulse Chain side. Slay some zombies. You said, I want to see Riot Games retroactively drop skin NFTs to owners to make their stuff tradable. Integrate wallet into the client and you don't need to do anything to the game itself. You know, I think the first game that does that is going to freaking dominate not only crypto, but the gaming industry as well. Because if you give that type of autonomy and ownership to your players who have already built a following and spent money and collected digital assets and you just suddenly make those apps assets tradable boom that's gonna be huge the problem is is it can ru ruin a game if it's turns into play to uh, pay to earn a play pay to play and uh, instead of like earning your way into the game so they have to I think it's gonna have to be like a cosmetic only game like the items in the game have no real use case in the game other than your identity in the game and personality and the way your character looks. That's just my opinion though. Take it with a grain of salt. I could be wrong. Someone could pull it off. <sighs> Boombox heads, you said, interesting. So if we have no ETH and a bunch of alts and NFTs, uh, you would just get a copy of all your alts and NFTs on the other chain. Um, whether or not they have value is up to those projects and whether or not they validate those coins. Um, but if they don't have admin keys and it's a fully decentralized project, no one can say anything. They may just go over there and just use those smart contracts because smart contracts are fully permissionless. Well, the ones that don't have admin keys and nonsense. And if it's a truly permissionless project with no admin keys like based coin and ample forth and uh yam coins <laughs> yam finance uh projects like those they've burned their admin keys so those rebasing coins are going to work over there on the other network but they won't have oracles to make them work properly so i don't know how that's going to work because a lot of them use chain link oracles and i don't know how decentralized chain link is like unless they were using sushi swap and uniswap as their oracle uh, I don't know how well that would work because even on Uniswap and SushiSwap, you're going to go over to the Pulse Chain side and you're going to see everything says zero dollars. Like there's not going to be any volume. There's not going to be any value. There's not, It's all going to say zero, 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 zero on everything. But if something traded for Hex and Richard Hart decides to add shit loads of liquidity for Hex, then that thing would suddenly have value over there. So... It's really weird. It's weird to think about. It kind of makes me want to like add a bunch of hex pairs to a bunch of random shit coins on Ethereum. So when it forks, I just have those positions over there on <laughs> over there on Pulse, and I can go play around with the market and just see what happens. <laughs> Not financial advice. You will probably lose your ass if you try doing that. You might lose everything because what if that coin you trade? or add liquidity for has no value on the other side and then you just bought them over here on ethereum for no reason the price tanks on ethereum they have no value on pulse and you're just ass out and have no bridge or way to get back over that could happen so be careful what's the benefit of this just the speed uh, why it do it then well, Boombox Heads, um, this is a bit of a vampire attack on Ethereum, uh, but it also, as Richard Hart, the creator of Pulse Chain and Hex, has said, is uh, he's helping Ethereum. 
because these ethereum is expensive as as hell to use you know it's just it's crazy expensive so if he's forking everything onto pulse chain and giving everyone a cheaper version to use people who are priced out on ethereum can go use pulse chain uh so that's the biggest benefit is people who can't afford to use ethereum just like matic and xdai they're gonna go use it just like binance smart chain they went and did DeFi over there because it was just too expensive on uh mainnet so people are going to use it all the DeFi protocols are going to be forked and available if they're fully decentralized forks on pulse chain they're going to work on pulse chain day one whether or not they have value is another question you can trade all day but like i don't know how that's going to work I can't actually process it. My brain can't process what that's going to look like. Especially without the Chainlink oracles connecting everything properly because everyone relies on Chainlink oracles so for price feeds. Um, I don't know. It's going to be weird. Hey, Icehopper. So you kind of missed it. We're having this big event. Did you hear about the big fork that we're talking about with Pulse Chain? freaking weird it is freaking weird here you can check out this cool fox yeah they will need new order oracles but i mean if chain link supports pulse chain which they probably would um then chain link oracles will just work over on pulse like as soon as they turn that on Chainlink oracles are a very centralized service, so like uh, it's hard to say how that would work. But Uniswap is an oracle, SushiSwap is an oracle. Those give you price feeds, like you we can see exactly what things are worth. So if SushiSwap supports Pulse Chain, then there would suddenly be value based on SushiSwap as an oracle. So it's hard to say who's going to do what. It depends on who adopts Pulse Chain. No one could adopt it. Everyone could be like, nah. Uh, but here's the kicker. The sacrifice phase for Pulse Chain, people who sent their Ethereum and tokens into the Pulse Chain sacrifice phase, um, it's called a sacrifice, but make no mistake, this is kind of like an ICO, okay? Uh, People would sacrifice their tokens and send them there. They would liquidate them for stable coins, and then they're going to issue everyone Pulse tokens in exchange for what they sacrificed. So it's like an ICO, and it is the largest ICO in the history of crypto. Hands down. It is the largest. In just Ethereum alone, there was like $4 billion worth of, of tokens sacrificed. And I think... I think I don't know if this was right or not because I was just scrolling through the troll box and, and Telegram and trying to figure out what was going on and wrap my head around it. They said between all the other chains like Litecoin and, and Avalanche and whatever the hell else they were supporting, there was $15 billion sacrificed. That is bigger than EOS. EOS was only like $4 billion. So this is the biggest ICO in the history of crypto. And a fork of Ethereum, one for one, like perfect network state, and everyone gets tokens on a chain that they can use that's cheaper. I don't know. Nothing may happen with the largest ICO in history. Hmm. What do you think? What do you think? I think nothing's going to happen. Or do I? Sounds like a dupe from Diablo 3. Diablo dupes. The great migration attempt. It's a vampire attack. They're going to suck liquidity out of the Ethereum network and into Pulse Chain. They already did. This token sale that they're doing, it's, it's a token sale. It's not a sacrifice. They're giving people tokens in exchange for giving them crypto. Like, it's a token sale. <laughs> nice wording, though. Hopefully that gets you around some regulatory nonsense whatever um anyway pretty funny to watch largest token contribution in the history of crypto total fork of ethereum 
everyone gets duplicated coins on both networks. People priced out on Ethereum are probably going to go use Pulse Chain because why not? Developers are probably going to go activate the Pulse Chain side of their network. Sushi Swap's probably going to add it to their giant list of networks they already support. They'll probably end up getting used as an Oracle. Uniswap is getting forked by the team actually building Pulse Chain. They're building a MetaMask alternative as well as bridges, like right when all this launches. And it's going to take like two, three months for all this to launch. So, and testnet's supposed to be up like this week or next week. So we'll be able to actually see like a testnet version of all your tokens and, and contracts and play with it on testnet. And then if testnet goes good, they're gonna launch the mainnet. Crazy stuff, crazy stuff. It is proof of stake. Yes, actually, thank you for reminding me of that, Benjamin. Um, proof of stake. Yeah, it's going to be proof of stake before Ethereum did proof of stake too. So, uh, and the way it works is there's 31 nodes that are going to be on the network for Pulse Chain. So, 31 nodes will be able to all the validators, and no more than 31 can exist. And the way you get to be one of those 31 is by holding the most Pulse tokens. So, if you want to be on the 31, you got to buy more Pulse tokens. And if you get bumped down the list, you got to buy more Pulse tokens. And you get bumped down the list, you got to buy more Pulse tokens. And it's going to be this race to stay as a validator. And uh, that's an interesting concept. I haven't really seen that other than I think there's a couple others that do that with uh, master nodes. Um, pretty sure that's the way the master nodes work. Uh, but I don't know. I think master nodes are actually like just a set amount. Like, Whoever has X amount of tokens can be one. This is a weird little like race to the top 31. Uh, pretty interesting. We'll see how it works. But yeah, it's proof of stake. So it's energy efficient. Orc of Ethereum did proof of stake before Ethereum. Right during the London hard fork, when a bunch of shit on, excuse my language, a bunch of stuff on Ethereum might break this as of tomorrow because we're doing the London hard fork tomorrow. Um... I did talk to our, our developers. I talked to Matouche this week, and he said nothing should break. It should be pretty straightforward, and it doesn't really affect dApps. It only affects gas pricing in the gas fee market. Um, so I don't think our dApps will break, but I do know there's other stuff that's going to break. Like gas tokens are useless. They're dead in the water. Uh, a lot of other things that have to do with the gas fee market are going to be dead and broken. Anyway. Anyway. Well, then can run on Pulse till they can scale back to ETH maybe later. Yeah, and that's the other thing. If Ethereum scales and goes to proof of stake here soon and, and they get all the scaling solutions right, you can't beat the liquidity and traction and developer mindshare on Ethereum. Like, that is... Ethereum is an amazing community. And Pulse may be forking Ethereum. And make no mistake... I am not like super like pro pulse chain, like I'm um, pulse chain maximalist. We're going to migrate to pulse chain and Ethereum is dead and blah, blah, blah. It's the Ethereum killer. No, it's a layer two solution. Just like Matic, just like XDAI, just like Air Airbnb, <laughs> BNB, Binance Smart Chain. Um, it's just a layer two solution is the way I look at it. And it's going to help Ethereum in a lot of ways. It's going to help Ethereum scale. So, yeah, when people migrate over there, it's going to be no different than them migrating over to Matic. And then if they want to sell with the liquidity on mainnet, yeah, you migrate your assets back to mainnet and you sell them on OpenSea and you get all that liquidity and money that's on Ethereum. Yeah, you can't beat it. That's, and the people, the people is really key. I don't know the people on Pulse Chain. They might be some horrible, toxic, crazy people that are just going to be a terrible, toxic community that everyone hates. And that's the tell-all sign of what's going to happen on a network. Not the tech, not the tokens, not the price, not the developers, nothing. Well, the developers matter, but they're the people. They are the people. They're part of the people. And uh, you can fork a community. You, you can fork a network and you, for, you can fork code, but you cannot fork a community. And that's not going to change. And Ethereum's community is freaking amazing. They really are. So, fork away, Richard Hart. <laughs> Go for it. 
And uh, I hope your community is not toxic like the Bitcoin community has unfortunately become. I hope they're not toxic like some of the speculative communities have become. And I hope you do really well. And I hope it helps Ethereum scale because it is a layer two solution, which is scaling. So I'm all for it. Do it. Go for it. Run with it. PFP projects are sort of forking the same community over and over, the speculators. Yeah, they really are because everyone's like hopping from project to project. And uh, a lot of these avatar profile projects are just, they're, they're just nonsense. Yeah, they are forking each other's code and running with it. And the same community is hopping from project to project, just trying to speculate and make money off all these NFTs. And um, it's not sustainable. It's not going to last forever. I mean, it's like, it might start in a big loop here and everyone's making a bunch of money. And then the next loop is a little smaller and the next loop is a little smaller and a little smaller and a little smaller. And that long tail slowly diminishes. You just have dimin diminishing returns on this stuff. It's just how it is. Um, but Matic and XDAI and Binance Smart Chain and Pulse Chain are, that's a little different. You're offering a valid scaling solution to Ethereum to kind of load balance the network load until Ethereum can scale. And that's going to be awesome. It's going to be cool. But you know what you can't fork either? Boombox had digital vinyl NFTs may have duplicates on Pulse Chain this next month. And that might be a fork that exists in the world. But you, as the creator, get to make the decision on how that's used because you use them as patronage. You use them as support for your art. You use them properly and not as a speculative instrument. Granted, it's cool if people start speculating on the secondary market and then you get secondary market sales and percentages and that's cool that that's a thing, but it's not the focus, you know? The focus is really on the fact that it allows you to give you, it gives you agency over your work as a creator and that's freaking awesome. And now you are load balanced and given an opportunity to have a dirt cheap network to do the exact same thing on. And you can even decide, you know what? I'm an ETH maximalist. And you can make that cultural decision to build that that type of thing into the culture of your community and say, you know what? We're not going to accept Pulse Chain. I don't like Richard Hart. I don't like his attitude. I don't like his fancy watches spinning around on stream. I don't like how he flaunts his wealth. Sounds like a douche. I don't want to talk to him. You can say that and actually deny Pulse Chain entirely and invalidate those NFTs over there and say, you know what? I'm flipping, I'm flipping him the bird. Not going to support it. Not going to support that vision. And that is the cool thing about crypto is everyone gets the right to choose. It is not imposed on you. It is permissionless. I would just send them to you guys, right? No, boombox heads. Like, you don't need to send anything. If I own the... See, I own your boombox heads on mainnet right now. So if it's a perfect fork of Ethereum, I own them on Pulse already. You don't have to do anything. No one has to do anything. It is a perfect replica of the Ethereum network in every way. So my boombox heads that I've bought from you, that I own, I will have those on Pulse the moment the network goes live. And I will already have them. And you just have to talk to me and decide like, hey, I know you have a duplicate over there. And I just want to let you know, me as an artist, I'm actually honoring those. So if you want to use those as a cheaper way to redeem them for a physical item or a free song or a live stream or whatever it is you're doing, you as an individual can decide how you're using that token. You can say, you know what? Uh, currently, Pulse Chain ones don't unlock my Discord channels to gain access to my token controlled access Discord channels. But as of next week, I am going to honor those. And if you hold the Pulse Chain ones, go ahead and use those. And it's up to you as an individual, just like it's up to everyone else. So everyone who holds sushi swap liquidity is going to have the same sushi swap liquidity on Pulse Chain. Pretty weird to think about. Pretty weird.
But see, there's going to be a lot of people that just do it because it's cheap. And they're going to be like, okay, let's run. Let's do it. It's cool. It's cheap. I'm broke. <laughs> and there's a lot of broke people because they bought crypto. When Elon Musk said, I'm buying crypto. We're going to the moon. It's the super cycle. Yeah. And then he says, we're going to stop accepting crypto at Tesla. And uh, yeah, uh, Bitcoin is not energy efficient and I don't like it anymore. And we even sold some. So uh, just to see what the liquidity was like and show people that there was liquidity. And uh, oh, yeah, I know Michael Saylor told you to put all your life savings into crypto. <laughs> yeah, go blame him, sue him, even though I'm the one that dumped the market. Yeah. Fun stuff there, Elon. Nice guy you are. Yeah, nice guy. You're one of those nice guys. Yeah, real nice, dude. Real nice, Michael Saylor. Don't tell people to buy at the top. You're just giving people... You're just, like, making newbies to the market liquidity for everyone trying to get out on the way down when you go FUD the market. It was a jerk move, Elon. It really was. Anyway, it seems like everyone's done hearing about Pulse Chain. I don't have any more questions, comments. That was the topic today, though. It is actually kind of an interesting event, and I wanted to discuss what it means because it may not be the first and last time this happens. Just like most trends in crypto, you see it happen multiple times. So if Richard Hart did it, you're probably going to see a couple more people do it too. And you're probably going to see three or four forks of Ethereum in the next year or two because everyone's like, well, if Richard did it, I'm going to do it. That's just how crypto works. And uh, then there'll be diminishing returns on each one of them and it'll be like, do, 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 do all the way to the, to the bottom. Um, so expect us to keep happening and try to pay attention to what it means, how it works, and how you as an individual navigate that if you're a creator or run a protocol or issued a token or blah, 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 blah. You have to really navigate this as an individual. What's the transactions per second on Pulse Chain? It's identical to um, ETH. Uh, so there's not going to be any more like throughput other than the fact that it's proof of stake and a little cheaper to use. Uh, and I don't think they're doing like the London hard fork. I think they're actually forking Ethereum prior to the London hard fork. But they may not. I, I, I don't know. They haven't actually said when they're going to take the snapshot. If they take the snapshot and they fork the London hard fork version of Ethereum, then it'll be identical to that one. I don't know. Honestly, I, I don't know what their take is on the London hard fork. They may do something entirely different or something exactly the same. Uh, but no, the transaction throughput isn't going to be... Um, isn't really going to be anything... Uh, more. It's going to be the same as Ethereum in every way. It's just going to be more energy efficient and cheaper to use because the token uh, wasn't pumped to oblivion and speculated on by a bunch of people who were probably trying to, to uh, disable the Ethereum network because people who don't want to see crypto succeed, the only thing they could do was actually pump the price so to oblivion to the point where it was so expensive to use Ethereum that it wasn't feasible anymore. And make no mistake, there's people in the world with enough money and power and clout to do that and get away with it. And I wouldn't doubt it if there was state actors pumping the price of Bitcoin and Ethereum to make it unusable. So maybe these forks of Ethereum and Bitcoin aren't so bad if you think about it from that perspective of cutting off the head of the Hydra so two more split off and now we're sitting here with usable networks again. It's like, whatever. There's bridges between all of them. There's atomic atomic swaps. You can get atomic wallet and you can swap between Litecoin and Bitcoin and uh, a couple other coins. Like, it's just, it's great. It's awesome. I love other networks. I love chopping the head off the Hydra. I love getting a cheaper network to use. Back in the day when I first got into crypto, I used to use Litecoin just because it was cheaper to transact. So I'd swap it over to Litecoin 
and I would pay someone in Litecoin so I didn't have to pay those crazy Bitcoin transaction fees and Ethereum transaction fees. It's like, it's a no-brainer to use what's cheaper. So, great, wonderful, let's keep doing it. I am not a maximalist. Ha, can you tell? Well then, ETH going to is going to get burned. Price probably will rise with more usage. It's hard to say, my body, because um, historically speaking, we're at the point in crypto where we should be entering a bear market. Everyone says this is a super cycle, and we're going to just keep going up, and this time is different. But if this time isn't different, and it's the same as every other time, we're entering a bear market, probably for the next two years all the way up until the next Bitcoin halving. And if that happens and we enter another bear market, A, we need to be prepared emotionally for it. We need to be prepared financially for it. And it will make Ethereum usable again. And that's not a bad thing. And if we have two networks that are identical running up into the next bull market when everything gets crazy expensive to use and, and all the scaling is available, the next bull swing, we might actually be able to handle it and not be paying $50 per transaction. We'll have multiple networks, multiple bridges, multiple ba load balancing solutions, multiple dApps with actual like value inherently baked into them, not just nonsense speculative BS. You'll have non-financial dApps that are actually being used with locally hosted front ends for a truly decentralized grassroots economy. That sounds more exciting than I can possibly wrap my head around. So I don't even mind a bear market if we get one. And I don't mind a bear market because everyone in the world understands crypto now because of NFTs. And they may actually have an opportunity to participate because of things like Pulse Chain and a bear market and low prices and being able to actually transact without paying an arm and a leg. I'm like, Psh. I'm excited. I am nothing but excited. I get excited when the prices go down too. I'm like, I can take a breather. I can focus on stream time. I can meditate. I can mint something without paying $300. <laughs> I can I can issue a smart contract without paying thousands. Like, whew, it's expensive to freaking deploy a smart contract. I'm stoked. I am stoked. Let's cut off the head of some more hydras. Chop, 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 whack, whack. Yes, chop. The final boss. Anyway, I think that's it for me, everybody. Um, actually, if you don't have any more questions, comments, thoughts, or anything, um, I'm gonna hop off. If you do have any more questions, comments, or thoughts, um, post them in chat, and I'll hang out a little bit longer. But I will let you have your day, evening, morning, wherever you happen to be in the world. Back if you don't. I hope it was an interesting chat today. I hope you had some insight on what some of these things look like. And uh, yeah. Um, anyway, everyone, you have a wonderful day. I will catch you next time. This has been another episode of the DAP Digest, helping you digest decentralized apps and the networks they are built on. Whack, chop, forked or not. We'll see you next time. Brady McKenna, out. See you later, everybody.